Ladies and gentlemen, we are in the great hall of the Institute of Technology in Zurich, Switzerland. As you have already read in the newspapers, a most amazing discovery has been made in this most peaceful of countries. It seems that Dr. Victor Frankenstein, once thought to be a character in a story, did actually exist and created what we have come to call his monster. The purpose of this meeting today is to hear, for the first time, the actual voice of the monster. The machine stands before us on the stage. It's a huge thing looking something like a bad dream out of a science fiction story. The recordings themselves are now being brought in. They, uh, they look like oversized tape reels. A technician is now placing one on the machine. And Dr. Heronius signals for silence. The red indicator light on the machine has just gone on. And we are about to hear Frankenstein's monster speak for the first time. Woo! Yes, greetings, everybody. <laughs> wow. October 1 5. Oh! Wow. Oh! 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 What? Are you all right? It's a birthday. Whose birthday? FPP. Oh, happy birthday. 12 today. 12 years old. Queen. Tween. The FPP's in its tween years. I think the FPP, we're thinking of human in human years. I yes. think we should really think of in dog years. Yes. The FPP <laughs> is like... <laughs> FPP is waking up in the morning with aches and pains. That's right, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. For sure. It's 12. That's a long time in podcast years. Your credit. All credit is due <laughs> to you. Well, thank you, Jomf. Yeah. I'm here with John Fideli. Jomf. We are friends, you and I. Friends. Uh, friends. <laughs> Good. Good. <laughs> Halloween time. Yay. It's my understanding that here in the U.S. we're Halloween crazy. It's getting earlier and earlier, like Christmas and Thanksgiving. Yeah, it's Halloween crazy. We have our new... <laughs> Frankenstein. <gasps> Frankenstein, give me. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> so this is our brand new emulsion, our holiday emulsion. Mm. Frankenstein, 200 ISO black oh. and white, 35 millimeter, 120. And? We will hand roll it, 620, it's also available. Ooh. And 4x5, which is special. Special new matt mirage is so thrilled and i'm thrilled that he's thrilled mm -hmm. and i told john i said john will you ask me like questions like how you, much for four by five how much 29.99 for how many shoots 25 sheets, sheets. whoa 35 right. and 120 is 10.99 a roll that's that's nice yeah for 36 24 24. 24 24 exposure where'd you get this film <laughs> <laughs> is this werewolf film oh, repackaged? That, that's a very good question. So we have now three monster emulsions. We have Dracula, 64 ISO. Oh. We have Wolfman, Ooh. 100 Ooh. ISO. Ooh. ISO. And Frankenstein, 200 ISO. Good, good. Good. We've tested this film. We test it as a negative. We test it as a reversal. Like tests, tests, tests. Mm -hmm. Test, test, test. Rigor rigorously tested. Yes, and a, a, a big thanks to all the FPP folks, the Leslie Lazenby, the Matt Mirage, mm -hmm. the Mark O'Brien, the Owen McCafferty. Who, so all yeah. the FPP regulars have helped out testing this. And the 35 millimeter is, is hand-assembled. So... Yeah. The, the artwork is printed and then uh, rolled. Who did the artwork, Paige? That's Paige K. Davis. So it's a cute Frankenstein. It Yet it still, you know, has elements of scariness. Nicely done. Yeah. So you're saying Frankenstein and Werewolf are the same emulsion? No. Oh, what'd you Frankenstein say? Frankenstein and uh, Wolfman are different emulsions, yeah. but from the same emulsion family of uh, cine films. I gotcha. So it should be noted that black and white cine films are just standard black and white development. There's no REM jet associated with black and white mm -hmm. cine films. Mm -hmm. And all of the development times are listed at the FPP, Film Photography Store com. You just scroll down and it says, you know, home developing. Right. There you go. All the formulas, recipes, what have you. Yes. And also a big thanks to Trev Lee. Love that guy. Yes. Great photographer. He did He's the all, man. He did such a great job. Mm -hmm. And I just sent him the... 120 and the 4x5. He's very excited about shooting the 4x5, as is Matt Marash, who's shooting the 4x5. Mm -hmm. 
So and um, he's great because he posts all of his, all of his results on his Instagram page. Yes, they test a lot of films and they show con- the uh, contrast between film stocks. The darkroom dot com. dot com. Yes, their Instagram account. It's great. Love it when I see a new post from them. They recently did a post like Portra One Hundred and Sixty versus right. Ectochrome One Hundred. I, I yeah. love it. I love those comparisons because, like the Portra and the Ectochrome, they're so different. Mm. And then you read the comments. You know, and it really is like, you know, what type of flavor do you like? Like yeah. one guy was like, oh, you know, ectochrome, hands down. Right. Because of this, this, or this. Yeah. But then there's another guy who likes the other one. Yeah. For probably just as legitimate reasons. So our brand new monster film, Frankenstein. Frankenstein. And his pals. Now we have the whole monster rally. We have Frankenstein 200 ISO. Brand good. Wolfman 100 ISO. Mm-hmm. There's a curse upon me. I change into a wolf. Drac. 64 ISO. Drac. I am Dracula. Did you just say Dracula? Dracula? Dracula. <laughs> I'm channeling Tim O'Raw. Yeah, instead of Dracula. Dracula. <laughs> okay. So Dracula. <laughs> I had a little bit of a, of a 120 film is 61.5 millimeter. Okay, if you say so. No, that's what it is. Okay, I believe you. Yeah. Uh, we're going to have a very... I don't know how many rolls I have. It's very limited. Like, what do you think? Drac- we'll have Dracula in 120. Oh! Mm, that'll be... That'll blow out. It'll blow out in five minutes flat. Easy. It's kind of a... Uh, it's kind of astonishing that there's uh, so much interest in this stuff. I mean, think about 10 years ago. Or think about 12 years ago. Yeah. Here on our birthday. We were just talking about the very limited amount of film was available. And all the films were being, like, discontinued. It was all just Kodak and Fuji and Agfa and uh, Impossible. Impossible was, like, the They new... were the startup. Yeah. They kind of set the trend, right, for, like, uh, boutique films. They certainly did. The other guys. I do get emails about um, Polaroid, you know, the crack and peel pack film. Uh, folks, uh, just set your web browser to supersense.com. Mm-hmm. That's Florian Doc Caps. Oh, he's at it again. He's in Austria, and right. they devised, like, you know, a boutique version of the film. Seriously. Serially. Dracula. The very mention of the name brings to mind things so evil, so fantastic, so degrading. You wonder if it isn't all a dream, a nightmare. A nightmare. Before you really fast go into all those letters... Real quick mentions of people who yeah, have been kind um, enough so to send in their donations. Here, our 12th year, uh, it's, it's, you know, it's really cool, man. It's cool. And what we're doing with the school donation program, it's, I thought about it. You know, we're shipping this package out today to the, uh, there. to Brenna McLaughlin at the High School of Art and Design in New York. Big package, five big boxes. Yep. And last week we sent one big box out to the St. Michael's School in Maryland. Mm-hmm. Folks listening, it's 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 us and it's you. You know, you folks are sending in the donations. We, myself, John, and then of course, you know, when Mark and Leslie are here mm-hmm. and Matt yep. and Owen, you know, we we sort through, clean all the them cam- up, clean them up, make sure they're ready for a kid, organize them, and then we ship them back out. But it's it's your support mm-hmm. of the film photography project, the online store, giving a donation. Donate, donating on a monthly basis mm-hmm. that gives us the funds because that's like five huge boxes. That's yeah. gonna, like, I can't imagine what the ship is going to be. It's probably going to be over $100 to ship. And that's just, you know, for what, 13 miles that from here to yeah. the city? <laughs> Two schools this week, last week and this week, got mm-hmm. cameras. It's an ongoing, vibrant program. Yeah. And John has been uh, vetting all the cameras, and you've uh, grabbed all these notes. Yes. Well, this is just a small... I've been saving this box. Kind of dug to the bottom of these. Ian Ross from Providence, Rhode Island, sent a couple of Fujikas, an Olympus, and a Nikon Zoom. Uh, Thanks so much. You got three Nikons from Dixon Liu, our good friend Dixon Liu, who's always uh, been a great friend to the uh, donations program. Peter Levitt from New York sent us Spotmatic and Accessories. Thank you. Valerie Stoker sent some Minoltas and some film. Thank you so much for your donation. Uh, we have Jeff Fassett, who sent uh, Nikon N80, which probably was sent out to the uh, school you just mentioned because they got a lot of Nikons and yes. Minoltas. So there you go. Thank you so much. A Nikon Speedlight uh, was donated by Sandy Hill Barons. Another Nikon, some Olympus stuff, and some Moolah Cash Money from Robin Cyril, who's in Hong Kong, all the way from Hong Kong. Thank you so much. Uh, another old friend, Tom Zoss. 
sent his third shipment a box of cameras and film. Thank you so much. Joyce Masson or Mason from Ramsey, New Jersey, sent in her donation. Thank you so much. Greg and April Summers from Sunflower Lane in Washington. Okay. Is that something? Oh, yeah. April Summers from Sunflower Lane. Doesn't um, get more uh, east, east Coast or West Coast than that. Thank you, April, and your husband. Cameron Lenses from Melissa R. You know who you are. Thank you so much. And the last one for right now is from Edward Zinzer, who sent uh, a camera in. Thank you so much. We're going to take a quick break. and we come back, we're going to be talking to Mr. Mark O'Brien's going to skid in. Oh, yeah? Yep. And we're going to do a, 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 a we're going to, duh. Yeah. We're going to do an awesome segment with him. Oh. Dracula just came and visited us. Oh, my God. Hey, Drac, what's up? Nothing. Nothing. What, what is, is up, up with you? <laughs> I'm flattered oh, okay. that you would put out a film that I could not be captured on. Ah, ah, ah. ah. So, Dracula, what's, what's so great about this film? You, you want I should I tell? Should tell. 24, 24 of exposure. Of exposure. At the 64 I saw. Oh, 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 oh. It's black, it's and, black white. and white. Just, Just in time, time for, for Halloween. <laughs> well, I can also tell you some other things about oh, it. Oh, what, John? It's the classic Eastern European panchromatic Svima FN64 formula. That is, as Dracula said, a 64 ISO. A chillingly strong choice for almost any situation and will work in any automatic or compact camera, even without a DX code. Well, thank you for putting me on a film, Michael Russell. You're very welcome. How much money will I be making per roll? (laughs) Thank you, Count. Hey, we're back. Probably Photo meetups after COVID is a topic that we have Mr. Mark O'Brien here. We're all crunching away. So dup, 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 dup. before COVID-19, the pandemic, yeah. it was Uh-oh. frequently photo meetups like all over the place. I'd see them all over social media. Uh, we had one in 2015 in Ann Arbor, Michigan. Yep. That was a lot of fun. And that was it. Wasn't that the one where we were on the street and we ran into like a digital gang? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah. It was like out of Seinfeld. <laughs> That's hilarious. No, there was. It was like did like they like a mass coming. Either out of Seinfeld or Midsummer Murders. Right. Yes. <laughs> There's also a movie called Man Bites Dog, a French film about a film crew who are documenting a serial killer's uh, you know exploits, and they come across another serial killer who's being filmed with a digital camera. Oh, so for they, real? Yeah, and they kill the digital guys. And they're like, "You want to take the camera?" He's like, "No, it's digital shit." So, <laughs> so photo shoots canceled. COVID uh, restrictions have have been lifted in most countries. What's going on, Mark? Well. A lot more is going on. I, I've been. You just went to uh, one. I just went to one in in uh, Asheville, North Carolina, my new near my new home. Would you describe Asheville as like a hip place? Oh gosh, yes. Like too hip? It's pretty hip. Uh, right. I mean, I'm hip. I'm hip now. Remember that guy? Yeah, yeah. I'm hip. I'm hip. Time to wake this show up. Yeah, yeah. I'm hip. I'm hip. <laughs> I hung out with a lot of different people for this meetup. It was sponsored by the Asheville Film Lab. Mm -hmm. A shout out to Alex Cox for starting that and getting it going. He told me when he was planning, he says, now... You've been to you've been involved in a lot of um, film meetup, and uh, he's been obviously following the FPP exploits and all that. Hey, Alex. So I had a lot of experience doing them, but guess what? This time, I was not the one in charge. I was the How, old guy. How'd that feel? Number one. Everyone else <laughs> there was in the thirty-ish range. So number one. Number one. Number one. How'd you feel about being the old guy? Number two. How'd you feel about not being in charge? <clears throat> it was great. I mean, <laughs> number one, I didn't. Number one. Number one. <laughs> I, uh, being the being the old guy, um, everybody come to you with their issues. You know, so it's they, like, oh, this we were asked fire, to, it stuck. <laughs> yeah. We were asked to introduce ourselves. They go, well, I said, and people were oftentimes said, well, I just got into film, or yeah. I've been using film for ten years, or and I said, well, as you can tell by my gray hair, I've been a lifelong film shooter, <laughs> which is true. It and, is. And when uh, did you start? When did you first pick up a camera? And oh, uh, probably when I was. 
12 or 13. And you were like, I'm going to keep doing this. Well, I don't know if I did it then, but certainly I had my first real SLR when I was in high school. So and so being the old guy to me, I mean, the crappy camera club, we had all ages. Years ago, you were the managing member of the Ann exactly. Arbor Area Crappy Camera Club. Right. And you would frequently have meetups every month yep. and do photo walks. And that's right. And we so we would have a photo walk, and we would go to the bar afterwards, brewery, and and have beer, and just talk cameras and photography and all that. Or sometimes we actually would do presentations about things. How many people were we talking would go for the on? crappy camera? Yeah, um, it varied. Sometimes we might have half a dozen show up for a meeting. Other times we may have two or three times that. Wow. And Mark's a brave man. Let me tell you this: I wasn't there. He fought a bear, but I. <laughs> I saw pictures on on somewhere. You would have these meetups at your house. Yeah, oh, I did boy. several times. <laughs> you ever like you know you just look you go down walk down the hallway and you see like people just like rummaging through drawers. <laughs> looking, no, no, you know they were looking in your medicine chest. You're the fucking worst. <laughs> you are the worst. No, well, bless you for having people in your house. Well, one time we had someone was there and we got to see old Disney films on sixteen millimeter projected. They brought them. He brought them. And there were things you would never see today because they were like made for a specific purpose back in the '60s, or and, and he had this archive of these old Disney films. Probably were, and they were millions. cartoons. They were really cool. So yeah, we had all kinds of meetings there, and they were all, sometimes we even had we had food and all that kind of stuff, and I enjoyed that. It was fun. So now I'm going to some cold, you know, sort of cold turkey. I don't know any of these people, mm. and you know, I'm not. I had nothing to prove, so I was there, and people had questions about my gear. I would show off some cool stuff, you know, and all that. What did you bring? I brought just my Nikon FE2 and. And also, I had my Argoflex 40. I had some film I wanted to use up in it. So this one young woman, she had never seen a TLR before. And and she was like, wow, this is so cool. And, yeah, it is cool. and yeah. Because they had that bright viewfinder in the Argus 40. Yeah. So it's, it's, you know, really neat. Key. Um, so part of these walks is obviously instructive. You, people who don't have the same en- amount of experience learn new things. I got to see some pretty cool cameras. I mean, it, the guy had a nice Raleigh Flex 2.8, and he was very generous. He was letting other people shoot with it, so I'm, that's pretty cool. So generally, I find that the crowd you have at a film meetup is pretty mellow. Yeah, for sure. There's, we're, number one, we all have this interest in film. It's extremely wide and varied, and people have... Number one. Number one, we all have this interest in film. It's extremely wide and varied, and people have some people have actually make part of their living doing shooting. They might not be shooting film for mm-hmm. that part, but they're doing photography. So they go to the photo walk to shoot some film. Exactly, and then some people are actually using film professionally. And then you talk to them, you go, you know, I really hate the drab existence of digital because what happens is you do all this work post processing everything to please your clients, and there's no no serendipity involved really <laughs> and it's it's dull work when you think about it but well, it's with a job a, it's yeah. a job right but with film i mean all kind of great things can happen or bad things can happen oh, but yeah. you learn from them <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. you learn john i know i learned the hard way um so the Eight thing times. was you have all these people who were various levels of skills and you share and you all have a good time and no one's <clears> like saying oh you're using a this camera or that camera or that film how, how could you? Unlike the digital group, which is like if you go out with a bunch of these people, it's like, well, you don't have the latest. Mm-hmm. Then what, what's what's wrong with you, right? Uh, who would well, say that? Our is that cameras, really like that? Yeah, That's they awful. they can be like that. It's yeah. very new gear driven. Yeah, it's really not that we're not gear driven, but most of our gear is made. Yeah, twenty or thirty years ago. Uh. There's a difference, in, in, and also there's an appreciation for mechanical things. Mm-hmm. I was probably the only person there that didn't have a tattoo of some sort. Oh, Sheldon. Um, I could be wrong. It's not too late, Mark. No, no, no sorry. I'm not. I'm not scarring my my perfect body. Why? Well, you only got a couple of years left, Mark. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, we don't know where the pandemic stuff is going, but the thing is, it was we've been all shut up for yeah. over well over a year. And being able to get out and talk photography with people and do some shooting with other people with similar mm-hmm. interests 
was such a um, unburdening uh, in many ways. I think for some of the folks, unless you're me. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, and I think we'll have more of these. And I see they've been doing some out in California. I mean, I know the dark room did one. Uh-huh. Yeah. So you, you're seeing these small groups of people come together and 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 do photography together and and share and learn and have a good time and. That is what meetups are all about, and I think we'll see more of those as long as things trend in the right direction. Mm-hmm. I think the we've been starved for these kinds of activities in the past year, and for sure, and certainly I don't know about other states, but I think North Carolina has been doing a pretty good job with things. So hopefully, we'll have more meetups coming up. Well, thank you, Mark. Hey, you're welcome. We hope you folks out there hook up with some meetups. Yep, and we'll be right back. When I'm assigned to shoot a guy like John Newcomb. I pack my Canon AE-1 with several lenses because I'm after more than just John's form. Creativity means capturing his intensity. You try it, John. Me? Sure. The AE-1 is so simple, you can really concentrate on your subject. About all you do is focus and click. The surprisingly affordable Canon AE-1. So advanced, it's simple. Hey, we're back. Here's a quick letter from, um, oh, Jonathan Woods. Jonathan, thanks for sending. He says, uh, my name is Jonathan Woods. I'm 36. I'm from West Sussex here in the UK. Hmm. A lot of folks listen in the UK. Uh, Folks in the UK, of course, you could buy our FPP films from Analog Wonderland. I don't know. I don't need to tell you to spell analog the UK way because you're from the UK. That's right. He says, I love landscape photography made on film. I want to drop you an email as I've only... Recently found the FPP podcast. Wow. And I'm absolutely loving it. Sorry I'm late to the party. Sorry. I found the show because my partner Nikki and I just moved house and my daily commute is now close to an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. She suggested I listen to a podcast during the drive. And I have to be honest, I had no idea where to start as up until a few weeks ago... I had never listened to a single podcast in my life. Wow. Been missing out, bro. Mm, That's right. (laughs) Yeah. The first thing I searched was film photography, and the FPP came up, and I saw it was coming up to 300 episodes available and thought I would give it a go. Four weeks in, and I'm now on episode 40. Wow. Yeah. And frankly, I find this actually hard to believe, yeah. and I th- I'm really grateful that, that this letter came in because you have to think, like, we've been doing this so long now, you think, was it worth it? <laughs> <laughs> Is there any, you know, validity, you know, does it hold up? Right. And he says, frankly, it's an absolute breath of fresh air. It's very much like listening to a conversation among friends, and I felt instantly right at home. I'm catching up to present day at about an hour uh, or two per day. Mm-hmm. So in about four or five months, I've caught up. I would have caught up. Jace. Yep. Well, you know, I just, th- 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 he brings up a good point, you know, because you see a lot of YouTube videos and advertisers who are doing film stuff. They're all flashy and modern and, you know, they have the faux film and they shoot with the digital cameras and make it look nice and they have the, the proper presenter, you know. Yes. And, we are just a bunch of guys talking. We don't really have that persona. And I think it is refreshing to see people just be completely real about their interests and not to try and make themselves look like these people that are, you know, professional, uh, you know, presenters. Yes. And in, the, in the early days, like the two mm. years, 10 years ago, and then nine years ago when we went to the UK, he mm. mentions that in here. Ah, so much fun. Uh, there was no marketing plan. There was no... It was just like Lomography was kind enough to say, hey, come on over. The podcast was your marketing plan. It was just like, hey, Basically. we're going to be at this Lomography store on this date. And back and then there wasn't a heck of a lot going on. Tons of people showed up. It's great. It was remarkable. It was really, really great. Yep. So a, a good time. I mean, there are folks today doing this, which is great. Like uh, you had mentioned, the Brooklyn... Uh, Brooklyn Film Camera, yep. and still Lomography New York. They just had a recent event in September at the yep. uh, park in Brooklyn. Get out of your houses and go uh, you know, hang with some like-minded folks. Folks, yeah. uh, I, I want to thank everyone for tuning in, and uh, it's been great to catch up. If you wouldn't mind going over to our YouTube channel, yeah, Film Photography Project. Yes. And uh, folks listening, just do me a favor. Can you just like sign in? Can you subscribe? Yeah. Smash that button and ring that bell. Don't ring the bell. <laughs> We're going to see you next month. Okay. Oh, let me see what I can find a spooky tune since it's <gasps> October. Very spooky. Yeah, there's a few cuts that... Uh, you know what's really spooky? No, what? Uh, my favorite Halloween album, 
The Sky's Gone Out by Bauhaus. Well, it's not a Halloween album. It's a scary album. It is, but I can't really play it. No. Peter I, Murphy will get pissed. Yeah, I, I can play um, some of Kevin Neblung. He, he did some of those, like, monsters type stuff. Did he had, do Dead Girl? Oh, yeah, that Dead Girl. All right. All right, see you later. Bye. for you.